We are very privileged to include the very first and only television interview with Robert Plant, Led Zeppelin's lead vocalist, which was taped in March 1975. And now, our midnight special salute to Led Zeppelin. Critics and um, press and people in general took us for being um, what, probably the innovators of hard rock, and and they took us for being the band who made a whole lot of love and and Plant was the squeeze my lemon boy yeah. and all that sort of thing. And full stop. And so you got people coming along for the sole purpose of uh, getting their colloquial rocks off, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that we've tried to prove, or we have proven, with the albums that have come out in the past <coughs> six and a half years, that uh, the only reason that we are still together is that the subtlety of, of delicate change in the music mm -hmm. is, you know, the, the thing that keeps us together. And so people come along now and they, they come to see the changes, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't come to sort of jump up and down and go on and do whatever ladies do in the first yes. round. Spinning off on that, because obviously, and I know you're well aware of that, so many rock and roll groups and famous groups uh, split up and they go in their own ways. You guys have been together, I think, six and a half years now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's still tight. And well, you can see it on stage that it's tight, you know. And that, that kind of respect you have for each other. And how do you kind of maintain that? Well, really, because of the fact that we have been able to, to keep creating uh, material that... Uh, varies so much, you know. Uh, there's so many aspects of our imagination that can be brought out in the music uh, and in the lyrics um, that this is the stimulus to, that keeps us together, you know. Mm. I mean, if, if we found that we were getting, getting no farther or we were channeling ourselves down onto one plane of sort of, uh, or one musical level, mm -hmm. then we would be, we would start to get bored with ourselves and we'd be kidding ourselves if it went on stage and really and tried to deliver it you know mm -hmm. so the <clears throat> the whole point of the thing is that we we are still managing to after all this length of time to to spread the spectrum so widely you know and on stage each night there are various numbers where um john paul and bonzo and jimmy get into various improvisations that are never the same night after night, you know? So that gives them the, <coughs> the freedom to stretch out, you know, and they are great musicians. Robert Plant admits to having been a mod, a rocker, a beatnik, and almost a chartered accountant, and was knocking them dead in a Birmingham club when Jimmy Page first caught his act. The range and power of Plant's vocal and physical performance turns each concert into a rock and roll revolution. Jimmy Page began playing guitar at 15, inspired by Chuck Berry. At 20, he was London's youngest and best session guitarist working with the Stones, The Who and Eric Clapton. 
He joined one of England's first generation supergroups, the Yardbirds. And when they disbanded, he went on to put together the ultimate supergroup. His high voltage performance is unrivaled among guitarists. John Bonham claims he never had a drum lesson. Today, his bombastic, hard-driving drumming is part of the group's signature. His drum solos would sometimes run up to 30 minutes, bring down the house. Dreams of you all through my head. John Paul Jones began playing piano at six and became England's premier rock arranger working with the Stones and Donovan. As the group's bass player and keyboard wizard, he is without equal. John Paul is, uh, he was always uh, sort of known as the quiet man, the, the quiet bass player who stood back. But he's, his ability on keyboards um, is another aspect, as I was talking earlier about the, the way that you can, that we know that we've still got so much more material to cover, so many more aspects of ourselves to come out. Mm -hmm. And Jones's um, use of keyboard even more on stage is one, one more indication. What's left? You know, for Led Zeppelin, what do you want to do, like music? Or? Oh, heavens forbid, there's so much to do, you know, yeah. I mean, um, as diverse as the first album is from the second, and the second from the third, and the third from the fourth, and the fourth to Houses of the mm -hmm. Holy, and Houses of the Holy again to physical graffiti, there is just um, a universe, uh, dare I use one of Jimmy's um, terms, uh, we should probably spin off into the whirling vortex. <laughs> <laughs> I can only say that my heart is, that I am totally at peace with myself when I am uh, involved 100% in what I'm doing as, as of this moment, you know, and providing that I can maintain that peace of mind with the other three members of the group, then I believe that the guys who dug us when they are at, the, at my end, you know, uh, may still be following us along at 50 if we if we keep moving in a, in a reasonable way. I, I don't see that there should be any, uh, any time to stop. Led Zeppelin today remains one of the most brilliant and innovative groups on the musical scene. They have ascended the stairway to heaven to create the height of rock and roll soul.